three, two, one. Enough. Let's see. Um. You I'm different. You're more, I'm different. You're more, you're I think that Fred. I think Fred, Fred. I trust Fred a lot more than that like, Scott. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, he's you better than I mean? McTominay. He's I, I, I trust him more than fun. Scott, and I trust him more than even with Donny. Yeah, Donny's quality, but in the big games, yeah, like the one thing with Fred, yeah, Fred don't hide in the big games, bro. I've seen Fred turn up oh. against PSG. I've seen him turn up against Barcelona. Like a lot of his best performances are actually against the better teams. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like the shit of the team he plays against, the worse he plays, isn't it? Like sometimes. But um, yeah, with Fred, I think that his energy and it is just proper infectious, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's like when you see someone pressing, going to win the ball, all those other things, but it rubs off on the teammates, bro. Like, and he gets the crowd up as well, like. So it's one of them ones where as much as, yeah, if someone's comparing Fred's impact to like G-Song Park, yeah, very similar in terms of what, what they give you in the middle of the park, innit? Like they're not going to be the most cultured on the ball, but these guys initiate the press. Um, they make that they make life very uncomfortable for the other team. And the way Fred gets forward as well, look at the goal he scored um, the other day, literally breaking forward from midfield, coming off the bench, bro, like... He's Good got energy. um he's got a lot to offer as a squad player at Manchester United. If we lose him, do you know what I mean? People are talking about, oh yeah, but we'll get Enzo in, bruv, like and all of these things. Like, cool. So we're gonna spend like a hundred million for someone to replace Fred, bro. Like that is so sense. I think what it is with Fred is because you mentioned him there, his better games are against the big because I've said this before, mm. he's better when he's all his best attributes are when we're without the box. That's mm. what it is. All his best attributes, the pressing, the tenacity, the legs. And this is why you see him coming off the bench. Again, Fred is one of those, and I reiterate, this shouldn't be starting. If he's here, squad player. But he shouldn't be the guy after the guy to me. That's what it is. And he's mm. not the big, like, is, is he better than McTominay? Yes, but again, that comes back to what we were talking about in depth. Very low bar. Yeah, the bar's low. We should have quality. Like, the backup to me behind Casemiro and Ericsson should be better than what it is. But again, that can't be sorted in one window because I say the same for this. I say the exact same for the centre backs, for the bodies that are there. The improvement because we're we're an injury away from them being in there, from it being Ericsson and Fred or Ericsson and McTominay. That's not it. But, yeah, but then there's a, um, but then there's an argument that if we get say Frankie De Jong, mm. then Ericsson goes on the bench, and I like that. Mm. I like that Eric Erickson is because someone mentioned in the chat. I rate Erickson highly, but if we have Erickson as a squad player, that's mm. that's the that's the correct that's crazy depth. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the correct drop off. It should be Cas says let's say is the young for example because that's who we're talking about. Casemiro and the young, and then behind that is Christian Erickson, and then behind mm. Casemiro should be somebody of of Casemiro's profile but Erickson level. That's the form mm. we should have. That's what it should be. I'm fully with that. Then you can go in, all right, Ericsson and such and such is now our backup behind a De Jong and a Casemiro. Same way Martinez and Varane it should be not two play centre-backs of that level, but two players lower. Same way we looked at the, the attacking department. If it's Martial, Sancho and one other, that's good. Pick one. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. And then now we can start to start to climb up the table and improve. And yeah, but the man said it there, but Ericsson has to play every game. He does. Yeah, go on, yeah. fam. We brought Ericsson in as a 10, but he seems to play now as a Roman 8 now um, no. with Casemiro there. He definitely doesn't play that high up. Obviously, Bruno is the first choice 10. Yep. And it's like second choice 10 is is Donny at the moment, I guess. You yeah. know what I mean? Because Donny's Ericsson behind, doesn't man. seem to be playing in a 10. He seems to be playing quite deep. And I think, yeah. obviously, he was a 10 originally, but I think as he's gotten older naturally like he's just starting to kind of drop further back yeah and like that's what it is the reason why he's doing that one because he's very good and you can see that already like i've read ericsson from his time at spurs years ago secondly mm -hmm. he's the only midfielder we have currently in the squad who does what he does i was saying this he just links play so well and you don't notice it as much until he doesn't play just as he mm -hmm. does the small things like just picking up the ball on the left hand side and just chipping it down the line just something as basic as that because other midfielders we have can't do that. It just doesn't progress the ball. Like people think progressing the ball always has to be a line breaking pass, always and stuff like that. No, sometimes it can just be something simple as a six yard pass forward that you can't do because you might be a midfielder might be under slight pressure. I always go back to the Arsenal game. Look at the two passes. He played two quality passes into Bruno 
One was a floated yeah. one, and one was ripped around the corner. It's just stuff, but it won't. It doesn't get any plaudits. Bruno will get the plaudits for the assists, and the goals were good and were well taken. But without Ericsson starting those moves, you don't. Those goals don't happen, and we probably don't win that game. That's it. Yeah, that's and yo, this this comment here, bro. I couldn't disagree with you. I couldn't disagree with you more, bro. And let me tell you why. Because Christian Eriksen is so underrated defensively, bro. His positioning, his reading of the game, his interceptions, he's cutting things out is very, very good. But because he's not mobile, if you don't understand, yeah, what you're looking at, you'll think, oh, Christian Eriksen's a, a liability defensively because he's not quick. But Eriksen cuts out so much, so yes. much, bro, in transition. Yeah. And, and he reads the game. And what he does very well as well, he doubles up with players. So Christian Eriksen's smart. He knows he doesn't have the legs 1v1 to be running players down. But what he recognises very well, something similar to Casemiro without the physicality, he recognises when there's a dangerous situation and he'll just come around the side to be the extra man. And then he's the one that just nick, nicks the ball away. Do you know what I mean? So if he sees, for instance, the left back um, is there, Luke Shaw will shut my man down. And then Ericsson will come around the other side, nick the ball. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what he does. That's exactly what you're saying. You spot on. But he's, you, that's it. But he reads the danger yeah. and he wins the ball in a different way. He's not physical. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But him not being physical doesn't mean that he can't defend. There's just yeah. different ways to defend, bro. Like I grew up watching Michael Carrick replace Roy Keane. They defended two complete different ways. Boys, yes. Carrick stepped in and never really, you never really saw Carrick tackle because Carrick used to read the game, step in and intercept. Roy Keane used to run through people. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And as long as you get the ball, it doesn't matter which doesn't way matter. you do it. One of the crazy part is the scenario, the, and you explained it much better than I could have there. Mm. What is, because I was younger when that happened, I couldn't understand it. When Because mm. Roy Keane was my favourite player at the time and DMs like Carrick, but them people, they're regular now. Mm. Back then, the DMs were more Roy Keane, were more Casemiro, but too so destructive. Then you get mm. screeners and interceptors. And because I'm younger back then, I don't understand, but it's the same thing. Ericsson does position himself very well. But again, because he's mm. not physical, because he's not big, because he's not quick, it looks like he's not doing anything. But like mm. you mentioned, they're doubling up. Just, just intercepting, just by cutting off a passing lane. You, there's no stat yeah. for that, people. But just cutting off a passing lane is so important. But there's no stat for that. There's zero stats for that. There's no way to pinpoint that, pinpoint that and go, right, you just cut off a passing lane, which, cause, mm -hmm. which could have caused the opportunity, to, um, could have gave the opposition an opportunity to score a goal or create a goal. But yeah, Ericsson, yeah. I like a lot. He's very intelligent. Very, very smart football. Very That's smart. That's it. So, I, th I think he doesn't... Um, I think he doesn't get... He don't get the respect he deserves. And my man said in transitions what I'm talking about, but it's not his fault. Like every player's got weaknesses. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So and what you're saying, his... because because he's not he's not the most athletic, we have to negate all the things he's good at. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That that, that doesn't make sense. And you know the crazy part is look at the best team who have been over and look at their midfield. Where's the athleticism? Mm. 